What's up, SVSers, and happy holidays, and welcome to the holiday edition of the SVS Audiophile Happy Hour. Uh, I see a very active crew already commenting here, so I think a lot of people are jazzed for this edition. And of course, with me as always are my colleagues, National Training Manager, the Larry Magoo. Larry, how are you this evening? I am great, sir, and uh, hello to everyone, and I hope everybody is well. And of course, I uh, have our leader and president of SVS, Gary Yacoubi. Gary, how are you this evening? Thanks, Nick. Hey, everybody. So happy to be with the SVS community. And it's 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 Christmas time. It's the holidays. No matter what you celebrate, uh, I can't think of a, a group of people I'd rather be with than this gang. I'm watching the comments and everybody's so positive. It's great. Yep. And this will be our final audiophile happy hour of the year. So we are uh, celebrating every possible uh, reason to uh, to be here tonight. We have an awesome guest. Uh, we were just chatting with now and, and laughing really, uh, really hard. So I think he's going to be a fun one. Uh, his name's Brian Recapito. He is the uh, moderator and creator of the, I'm going to get this right on the first time, DC area audiophiles and home theater enthusiast Facebook group. Uh, so he'll be sharing some of his stories with us. And Nick, you know, I, I know I'm throwing a loop at you because I've, I've been so crazy today. I never even really talked about the show that much with you. But I think we should go around and do like some best of 2021 stuff um, from each of us, like favorite demos and things that we encountered in 2021. Oh, Are you cool with that? Oh, put me on the spot. Yes, I think we can definitely do that. You're going to have to let me think, think about it. it while Larry runs through the giveaways for the evening because we we really amped up the giveaways for tonight. You know, it's our last one of the year. We wanted to make sure we made some people very merry. Uh, so with that being said, uh, to be eligible for the giveaways, all you need to do is leave a comment. So everyone who's asking questions and saying Merry Christmas and sharing uh, good jolly feelings, you're already eligible. Uh, so Larry, what do we got on tap tonight for our four awesome giveaways? This is big. This is, uh, as you said, some of the biggest we've ever done. But we're going to start off with a small physically of the night, and that is a 3,000 micro subwoofer we will be giving away to start off the evening, followed by a pair of Prime Tower speakers, which I don't think we've ever given away on our broadcast, then a PB1000 Pro subwoofer, and then to wrap up the evening, this is a really awesome system that we're giving away. It is a Prime Wireless sound base, so it's our two-channel 300-watt amplifier with a pair of Ultra Bookshelf speakers and then an SB1000 Pro subwoofer along with all the sound path accessories you need to hook it up. So the speaker cables and the sound path interconnects for your subwoofer too. So a phenomenal 2.1 system somebody's going to walk away with tonight. Very good. Well done there, Larry. So Gary, I'm going to kick it to you. I mean, I, I got to think about this for my favorite ones of the year. I had some holiday hot yeah. picks that I was going to share with, with some folks, but uh, you have some what now? Some holiday sort of movies and music that I was going to throw out there as uh, yeah. what I've been watching. Recently. Let's do best of 2021. It, you, you come on, you really punted with your uh, music to uh, listen to while you cook. Uh, we had time to fun. think about that one. Let's I'm do let's that. do best of 2021. Ooh, all right. Well, uh, you put me on the spot. Well, you're going to have to kick this one off. While I'll I, kick uh, it off. I'll kick it off here. because I, I, um, I and I will do. Um, uh, what I thought was, from my point of view, the best movie of 21, 2021, which is more about demo, and also the best TV show of 2021, which is um, partially about demo, but I think also a really good show. And then um, best, I guess, music or music release of 2021. Is that fair? I like it. All right. So... Best movie of 2021, to me, it's not even close as far as demo. Uh, I really And I know, Larry, I think you and I might even agree on this. It is um, Dune. I thought that was phenomenal demo. It was proof that you can stream. Uh, if, you, if you have a, a receiver um, that's Dolby Atmos capable and a Dolby Atmos system, you can stream it in full Dolby Vision um, 4K and um, Dolby Atmos sound, and it sounded amazing. And I'm telling you, I'm not even clear on what even happened in that movie, but I still <laughs> loved it. I don't think anybody is. Um, I loved it. Um, and then for my favorite TV show, um, again, to me, it wasn't even close. I thought uh, Narcos Mexico was just totally amazing, really well done, riveting. Uh, it, I call it drama, but it's all, I, I think most of it's true. Um, and 
I also thought I, I I don't I know this is putting really putting you guys on the spot, so you don't feel like you have to do this, but I thought it would be fun for me to say to the SVS community, what was my favorite non SVS audio component? Hmm. Because I was thinking about it, and I got it uh, this year, and I definitely to me again wasn't even close. I got a Denon AVR 110, their new top of the line receiver. And um, I had their old top of the line from like three years ago and I replaced it. And you would think there'd be, you know, just a slight improvement. I just thought it was absolutely awesome. Massive improvement in my system. Um, and my system is really singing. So the SBS community, you're all invited to come over and experience it uh, anytime. Um, and then the you final heard one, that, right? Huh? I said everybody heard that, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and then the final one, I'm going to be you, listen the, I'm going to say my favorite music release of 2021. And this is one that I suspect will surprise people, um but it's not Bad Bunny. I know Bad Bunny really went over not well with the SBS community. I still like Bad Bunny. Um but uh um with all the music that was released in 2021 and a lot was um, honorable mention goes to Neil Young's Barn, which is really, really good. And I totally recommend it. And actually somebody uh, in the SBS community in our last show told us that um, Barn was coming out the next day and I got it and it's really good. I haven't spent enough time with it to give it my best. So I think the best, and I know this won't be, everyone will agree with me. I think the best was uh, Billie Eilish's follow-up uh, album happier than ever. So if you haven't tried it, give it a shot. It sounds amazing, really, really good. And, uh, I just think the music is awesome. Uh, uh just beautifully, uh, performed, sung by her creatively mixed and, and, and arranged. And the songs are amazing. I think. So those are my best doves. Cool. I like it. That, I can't go wrong with any of those. You stole my thunder with Dune, but I think I have a, a surprise entry to go there. But Larry, I'm going to kick it to you now. Are you ready? Yeah. So I, I will agree that Dune was probably the movie demo of the year. And maybe right behind that might be uh, Kong versus Godzilla. Because uh, that it just killer all the way around on the experience. Uh, I got to watch No Time to Die uh, two nights ago. And uh, some of you in that work with us know that I'm really frustrated because one of our coworkers completely spoiled uh, the movie for all of us in a leadership meeting. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed that. Got to watch that the other night. Uh, music wise this year, I didn't pick up much, uh, surprisingly. Uh, but the Metallica Blacklist album, I keep going back to and listening to because there's four CDs worth of stuff to pick up there for that anniversary release. Um, I think I talked last time about my favorite movie of the year, though, was was Nobody. It's not, you know, an earth shattering movie, but enjoyed that. TV wise, uh, series Squid Game was really all I watched series wise. And I think a lot of you were there, too, because I was really disappointed with a lot of the streaming releases this year. I mean, uh, most every big budget movie that got released on streaming this year was kind of a dud. So I'm looking forward to uh catching some new stuff i want to go see spider-man uh, i'm gonna watch I your favorite yeah. show would be the cobra kai trailer uh dude that was uh it's pretty awesome cobra kai is uh if you're a nostalgic person you know if you're a gen xer like me you fall right in there to uh the cobra kai uh everything um getting new releases from uh flicker stick this year was cool too you guys are tired of hearing me talk about that but you know it's Never. it's no taylor swift or billy eilish um but uh, it's, it's a band that's really important to me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, there's been so much. I've watched so many movies, but so little TV. But I did buy five new demos for us this week, which I'm pretty stoked for. So, Well, I thought those it? were some good picks. So I'm going to go with some uh, a sleeper pick for my movie. And, and again, this is not the necessarily best demo of the year, but it was the most surprising to me in how good it was uh, because it's a family movie. And I thought... Raya in the Last Dragon or Raya in the Last Dragon. Um, there was just a lot of great immersive energy from that film in terms of, you know, the, the flying around and some of the sound effects and just some of the more subtle 
base that you get from uh, some of the scenes in there. So, and I thought I had a pretty good storyline too. So I will go with Riot and the Last Dragon as my uh, sort of sleeper pick for movie demo. Um, I also, uh, I've been really into Witcher. Witcher just dropped a couple of weeks ago and uh, I've almost gotten through uh, the first uh, four episodes. I'm three episodes in and it's just action packed, but uh, you know, some great dynamic range. You go from these very sort of subtle, quiet, sort of uh, breathy talking scenes to, you know, jump out of your seat scare tactics, which always freaks my wife out. She's one of those people who literally screams at the top of her lungs when you get one of those scare moments. So I love that. And, uh, you know, it's got a couple of you're going to say she screams at Henry Cavill. (laughs) Well, maybe she's, uh, you know, more subtly uh, whispering that, but yes, it's, uh, he, he is a fine actor. And I think the, the whole thing is just very well put together as far as like a, a fantasy action type series as well. And then for music, uh, just more recently, I discovered Silk Sonic, which is actually like an R&B power group with Anderson Pock and Bruno Mars, two artists that I've never really listened to as soloists. But hearing them together, um, you know, the the instrumentals and the various elements that they incorporate into their music is just really fun to listen to. And it's high energy. Uh, so I really have gotten into them here over the past couple of weeks. And then Jacob Collier, who I dis, uh, discovered this year, and some of his music's actually mixed using SP16 Ultra subwoofers. We actually had uh, Ben Bloomberg, who's one of his uh, engineers on here at the uh, happy hour. So I was sort of introduced to his music through that. Uh, but just again, great creative talent, really brilliant use of, uh, of different instruments. And he, he plays a whole bunch of different, uh, parts of the music. Uh, so it, it was, uh, cool to just, excuse me, discover him and, and, uh, you know, learn about that as well. Uh, but I do have to throw a plug in for my, uh, favorite holiday movie demo scene, which is Polar Express when the train rolls up to the, the little kid's house that first time. Like if you have, you can't, you can't numbers, resist Nick, you have to do it. You're- I did it last night and it shook the whole house. And like, I just, I knew the moment was coming cause I've watched it every year for like the past four years. But when that train rolls up, it's like, if you have a legit subwoofer, like you feel it in every part of your house. So uh, I thought that was a lot of fun as well. So those, those would be my top picks Very here cool. for the, uh, you know, end of year showing off. Um, but we do have a formal segment now that I have to introduce. And Larry, I hope you're ready before we do our first giveaway. Uh, we have all oh, this production okay. value here. We have the Larry's movie demo. Oh, it's moment. even getting better. Yeah, and yes. I think you have uh, something special to share with us. So without further ado, uh, Larry, tell us what your movie demo minute for this week is. Well, this one was uh, tough because, you know, with the holiday season and everything going on and um, – how much Gary and I kind of like tormenting each other about uh, the Ninja Turtles. I really thought about doing the Ninja Turtle movie and explaining why we all love it and why everybody else. We don't all love it. it. Only you love it. Yeah. And that would have been equal. It would have been like 50, 50, why we love doing a demo, but why you hate it. But there's also something big coming up next week. And uh, it just occurred. It was the 20th anniversary of the Harry Potter movies. And there's going to be a special kind of everybody coming together on January 1st on HBO max. And one of my favorite all-time demos, I wanted to give you all something family-friendly to do, too, is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And it's where Quidditch was really introduced in the movies. And there's a scene where Harry's playing for the first time, and the snitch, the little golden ball with the wings, gets loose and is kind of uh, going crazy, and they're having to chase it down. And if you know the scene, all of you know it's a very famous scene. Uh, where Harry is chasing the snitch and they're going all around the sporting venue. There's the crowd. There's this big soaring soundtrack happening. So there's a lot of activity happening in all the channels. But then there's the subtlety of the snitch as it's moving from speaker to speaker and around you and behind. So you just get the little flapping of the wings and everything going on. And then the big bludger, the ball that's chasing him down, trying to smash him. You hear it crashing through the wood of the uh, bleachers and you get the wood splintering all around you and the whooshing as you're kind of going through uh, all of that. And then kind of comes to the end of the particular scene where it's trying to smash him. And there's just these huge thunderous thuds of bass and just tons of energy coming from uh, the blood you're making impact with the ground. And it's one I've always done going all the way back to DVD, then Blu-ray. And now on 4K, it's uh, chapter 15 if you happen to have the uh, 4K disc. And it's just a really fun demo that everybody will love. And uh, it's family friendly, too. That was a hey, great you one. Know, it, it occurs to me, Nick, um, that we're all really excited because we're all going to CES in uh, less than two weeks. And so maybe that's something to at least mention. Um Because all three of us are going. And, and uh, this is going to be, I guess, our what? Just our third 
public event or group event in two years. Um, and CES is, I think, expecting something like 90,000 attendees. So it's far and away the biggest. I'm pretty excited. What about you guys? Yeah, I mean, I know uh, Larry's been on a shopping spree with the Blu-rays trying to get all the <laughs> demos lined up. we got uh, quite a bit to get through. But that that's what makes it fun for me is just going there and just blowing the doors off of our Venetian suites uh, on the 29th floor. I believe it's room 132 and 133, just for, uh, you know, the record's sake, if anyone is going. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Larry, you, you got quite- Or the, if uh, you're in Vegas, there. I mean, we're, we're, it, we're officially exhibiting at the show. We have three suites in the Venetian, but it's a little bit easier to visit us than maybe some other, um, like a, something that's in the Las Vegas Convention Center. So if you're in Vegas, uh, the week of January 3rd, Come see us. And we might have to do like a unofficial, maybe not happy hour, but a little live stream. We're going to be posting on Instagram and Twitter, but maybe we can find time to do That'd 10, 15 minutes around the demo room. So uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll be doing some Vegas uh, live streams there, I think. Um, and uh, Larry, any any thoughts? So, you want somebody's to asking, are we worried about COVID? Um, so that's a great question. And um, listen, I'm not happy about this Omicron thing, but... Um, CES is requiring a vaccination uh, or you can't get in. Um, they're requiring masks and they're giving every person who, as soon as you get your registration, they give you a COVID test that you can get, you can, you know, that, that one that takes 15 minutes um, that you can take in your hotel room. So, uh, you know, what I've said to myself is this, they've created a safe space um, that guarantees that everybody around me is vaccinated um, I guess it's really safer than going shopping at a, at a supermarket. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's it's something we have to all consider. But, you know, our room, we're all going to be masked up. We're all vaccinated and boosted. So we're going to be doing our part. And, you know, it, it's fairly isolated, our suites. And you just got to keep socially distant and we'll, uh, you know, we'll treat it the best way we can. But it's going to be fun. I mean, Vegas, time to they get back to living life and just being safe, being safe the best way we can. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And I will say it is not open to the public per se, but if you are in the technology industry, you can go to the CES website and, uh, you know, attempt to register, but it is not a, you know, open to the public. You can just show up and get in for free. So uh, you'll want to visit their yeah. website to see if it's something that you're able to attend before you buy that ticket to Vegas. Although you'll probably find <laughs> something to do otherwise. Um, what we do have to do a giveaway. And then I did want to share some of the winners of our SPS under the tree uh, contest uh, game that we'd uh, announced on the last broadcast before we bring our special guest out. But our first giveaway of the evening is a 3000 micro subwoofer. And uh, the winner is, this is a, uh, not a real name. It's a tag highway man with a Y H Y G H way man, highway man. Awesome. Congratulations. Congrats. You got yourself a 3000 micro subwoofer. So congratulations. Uh, Eli or myself will reach out to you. We'll get your information and get that shipped out uh, in the next couple of days. So uh, as we discussed on our last broadcast, we had a little game going on using the augmented reality tool on the SVS site, which basically allows you to place SVS speakers and subwoofers in your room to be able to see how they look like to scale and everything like that. So uh, I'm going to quickly share three winners of the prizes that, uh, that we had, and then do a very quick slideshow. And maybe Gary will sing his favorite Christmas carol while I'm doing the slideshow. <laughs> what do you think, Gary? I think make it quick. <laughs> Good, there you go. Uh, so our first winner was uh, Alex Orton uh, from Twitter. And you can see here, 3000 micro under his tree. Uh, we also had Ben Smith from, or shoulda been famous is actually his name, from Instagram. You see, Rocked a little bit of a PB16 Ultra there under his tree. And then our email submission winner was, uh, I guess his, uh, it was official address. I'm not going to read it live on air, but he submitted through the owner's gallery on the SVS site. So these three winners uh, took home a sound path, audio accessories, a pair of prime wireless speakers, as well as a prime bookshelf 5.1 system. So uh, we already reached out to them via DM. Thank you to everybody who submitted. We had well over 100 submissions. And uh, if you cool. bear with me yeah. here a second, oh. I'll quickly go through this slideshow, but there were some fun ones here. So I thought we would, uh, since you guys put in the effort to make all these great submissions, uh, we'll show off some of them now. And then uh, Gary's going to sing for us. Probably not. I don't think we need that. So here we go. Uh, fa la 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 la. <laughs> There's a little corgi action. That's cute. Look at that dog. Yeah. We got the, you know, calendar there. 
lots of great looking trees there. I got to give you guys props. You got some uh, phenomenal looking trees, some natural, some not so natural. Got the train set here with the elf on the shelf, little baby Yoda in the background. Uh, a lot of 3000 micros were shown and a lot of the PB16 ultras, which why am I not surprised by that? Um, this one actually got <laughs> into the tree. the tree. Yeah, that one's fun. There you go, a little uh, prime elevation on the floor with the uh, micro. Oh, this one's after our heart there, Larry. What do you think of that? <laughs> they actually showed the teaser from last night. Nice. That, that's a Charlie Brown tree going on right there. But props to you for having some holiday spirit. We, we can feel that. Well, Ultra Tower with those. Uh, what do you think of those 3,000 micro stands they got working? There you go. Uh, those are fun. Now, this is a majestic front hall. That, that's uh, one that you can appreciate. Some prime wireless action on the desktop. Stockings hung by the chimney with care. There we go. We got some uh, size orientation with the little <laughs> kids. Oh, uh, center channel on the floor. Here we go. We got uh, Olaf there holding it up. Uh, so there you go. There's your uh, assortment of SVS under the tree augmented reality submissions. Thank you again for everyone who plays. We're going to do some other augmented reality game here as we get into the new year. But uh, again, well over 100 submissions, and we had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, thank you to you all for making that fun and exciting for all of us. So with that being said, I think we've uh, reached the time where we're going to bring out our special guest. And as I mentioned before, his name's Brian Recapito. He is the founder and the moderator of the DC area audiophiles and home theater enthusiasts. I haven't messed that up once. Uh, you, you've well, actually messed it up both friend of Gary's. Yeah. <laughs> and he's an SBS owner, so there's nothing wrong with that too. But Brian, how are you tonight? Uh, thanks for having me, guys. I'm good. Our it's pleasure, actually, it's Brian. Actually, it's actually high-end home theater enthusiasts. We, oh. we, made, we put yeah, as many words as we could in the name of this group, <laughs> and no one ever gets it right. And it's now become sort of one of our things is screwing up the name of the group. So. Well, very good. And and I know you have uh, an extra special drink, but not just an extra special drink. You have an extra strength, uh, special drinking glass. So why I don't do. you tell yeah. us what you got for your glass and what's in it? I'm sure everyone's seen Christmas Vacation. This is the uh, famous eggnog mug. Um, it has got eggnog, a little bit of Dunkin' Donuts coffee because I'm going out drinking after this. And then uh, blackened whiskey, which I think Gary knew what it was, but Larry and Nick didn't know what it was. It's Metallica's whiskey. Um, and they infuse it with the low frequencies of Metallica playlists. So if you go on their website, they'll actually tell you for each batch. There's a batch number on here. They'll tell you what the playlist was of Metallica that it's been infused with. Um, can't taste it. Probably does nothing, but, you know, it's a good conversation piece. So I actually um, hear the whiskey itself is really, really good. It, it's the 40, 50 bucks. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah, it, it's, it's certainly good for mixing an eggnog. That's for sure. And the Bob Dylan one is also known to be really good. So maybe they're maybe no, we're right. onto something here. Yeah. There's I a Scotty Pippen one too, but it's the second best. So I'm just kidding. Can I I just want to say, you know, why I, I suggested okay. inviting Brian to our show. Brian is a really cool guy, um, as you'll see as we get to know him. But um, what I thought would be fun for the SVS community, Brian is is moderating a, a large audiophile group. How many people now uh yeah, so we're 1,300 folks. and 1,300 and, people yeah. just in the D.C. Uh, area where I live. Yep. Um, and um, the spirit of this group is like no other audiophile <laughs> group I've ever been exposed to. And I've been exposed to lots of them, both the physical ones like in different towns, <laughs> and but also the virtual ones like the uh, North American audiophiles one that has you know tens of thousands of people. None of them have the spirit of fun and joyfulness of the hobby that we all share, like the group that Brian leads. Yeah. So I really thought it'd be fun for the SVS uh, community to meet Brian and hear how how you started the group, Brian. Sure. Yeah, thanks. So I, I was a member of North America and Auto, Audiophiles, Home Theater Enthusiasts. You guys know all the big groups. They're 20,000 members, 30,000 members, whatever they are. And a buddy of mine from Virginia, Northern Virginia, where we live, noticed, you know, A, there are a lot of jerks. B, it was anonymous. <laughs> Never. You know, people, if you're not going to see somebody who could theoretically punch you in the face, then you probably feel comfortable saying anything you want, right? So we got together one night. We had a couple of beers. He was over at my house. I said, we're going to start a group that is just local to D.C. And, you know, and I don't know how it's going to go because, you know, Facebook, you just you sign up for a group. And, you know, it's just you, right? You start there. So, you know, we, we did it with the idea that it would not be anonymous. 
that folks would actually have the real risk of meeting someone somewhere and they have to behave themselves or be nice and 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 frankly be nice to other people <laughs> exactly right and be supportive of each other yes what a concept right. it, it is a concept um and we do quarterly events and that was pre-covid uh, we started that back up again gary knows he was at capital audio fest with us so we started it up and you know in the beginning it took off a little bit slow i was actually throwing ads on craigslist um, you know, I was going into audio files, North America and, 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 and saying, Hey, if, if you're local to DC, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, you know, this area come join us. And, you know, early, early on, I think half the members were probably Russian bots. I mean, I think you know, Putin <laughs> himself was probably a member at some point. And then, you know, once, once we started to get mass, we, we throw out everyone who we thought was not from the region. And then it just started becoming word of mouth. Um, and now we have, you know, 1300 folks who are all around this region who are supportive of each other. I mean, you know, if I, you know, if I buy something heavy and I need someone to help me load it up the stairs or get it in the basement, um, they're on my doorstep by the time I get home, you know, um, it's that kind of group. Right. And, and I've done that. I mean, I've bought things that are heavy on a whim and I can't get them up the stairs. They're 200 pounds, something or other and Macintosh amp or something. And, you know, that's the spirit of the group is people, you will see them in an event. They know you, they'll help you. And it's been it's been fantastic. And so, you know, if you're out there and you want to do something local, I, I could not urge you more. I mean, all kinds of friends. Now, this year we grew to a big enough size where we at the Capital Audio Fest, which I think was probably one of the only audio shows I think in the country this year, Gary. Right? I'm, I'm guessing. Um, it wasn't canceled. You're right. It wasn't canceled. I'm pretty sure. A, yep. It's a, it wasn't canceled, and we had a huge suite. And our group's a little different. I know. You know. You go to audio file shows, and and everyone's. You know, old and and miserable and and and, uh, and male. You know, it, no, but seriously, you know, it's a very dry crowd sometimes. And and our group, it's diverse. It's young. You know, we were drinking all night. We partied all night. Gary sent us a system. We had a home theater in there. We were doing Ford versus Ferrari. We were doing karaoke, and so we kept it light. You know, we had a really good time for for a group of people who are actually your friends. Um, you know, I got a lot of friends now from from all over the place. So that's the the short version of it. I was telling the story uh, to uh, our team, and I actually said it to Brian too. That you know, I, I went to Capital Audio Fest, um, and listen, I heard some good sound there and some good good systems, but there was a a bit of suck the life out of you sort of spirit in that show, in in the sense that you know, it's old guys playing stuff for other playing old stuff for other old guys, uh, and um, old guys playing old stuff for other old guys. That that and and. Uh, to, to find my way up these stairs in this room called the library, which is the worst name for a room for your group probably, probably possible yep. because it was just this spirited, diverse crowd, um, younger and older too. Not just, it wasn't like I'm old. I was still welcomed. I wasn't kicked out. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, women. And I think you had a party where there was actually dancing, later that day we, we you know i was telling you guys earlier we actually have a member who uh he he ran a, a journey cover band and when when journey uh had troubles he 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 actually was ta tapped to be the lead singer for a bit and so we put him on the spot we were doing journey karaoke songs and just whatever we could muster up but that's right we were drinking dancing audio files we get the videos are awful awful dancers i mean terrible <laughs> terrible dancers but but you dance like no one's looking. You have fun. That's all. That's that matters. exactly right. When you when you have a few drinks in you, you, you think you're a, you know John Travolta. So, yeah. so I am curious. I mean, I know you were uh, telling us earlier you have uh, multiple systems in your home, and mm -hmm. you know I think there's always some people who are looking for validation. It's like you know, I, well, I have one system. Like, why do I need a second or third? So I'm curious. Like, what what makes them different? Why did you choose sure. to have three systems? Like, you know, tell us yeah. a little bit about your gear setups at home. Sure. So I have a home theater in the uh, sort of a basement home theater that we've built from scratch. It's an 11.1 channel. It started all Revel. So we had the, the C208s and the F208s up front and then all Revel in walls and in ceilings. People don't know, but there's some Revel speakers, uh, speakers that the Atmos theaters use. Uh, my understanding is from 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 Revel that in Harmon that I think a majority of the Atmos studios use a 763L to demo their Atmos. So I put four of those in the ceiling. It's got a Marantz 8805 running up front, and I have some big Macintosh uh, seven-channel amps, um, you know, plugging along down there, powering it. So that, and, and of course, an SVS SB16 um, 
that, that anchors it. I don't have room for a second one. I would if I could, but the the, the, the stack of Max now has taken up all that real estate. I'd rather look at those meters um, in a black grill. So we yeah, there's an obsession with uh, blue uh, meters in in your group too. I feel like I am I am a meter obsessed up. person. That is correct. So Mac meters, I love Mac meters. Actually, I just bought a new Jeep yesterday on the ride up here that has the new Macintosh system in it with the giant meters on the uh, on the. I was amazed the, to see those meters. I literally first thought you photoshopped them in. I couldn't <laughs> believe that was real. Yeah, they're useless. They don't sync to the music. They they do nothing <laughs> except distract you from looking at the road. But you know what? Um, they, <laughs> but they they're, look they're cool. And then, you know, so that's the theater. We spend a lot of time down there. We, we tend to party a little bit. So it can be some sort of a, a club sometimes. We've taken the SB16 far past its limit. Um, you know, a few times we're going to that system's transitioning over to JBL synthesis. Um, the, you know, the, the SVS will stay anchoring the, the bottom line, but that system's on the move. My bedroom, I have Macintosh um, with JBL uh, synthesis in the bedroom, which is going to move down to the theater. Um, you know, Jill and I, my wife, we we, you know, got two kids. We're, we're prone to a bottle of wine lying there listening to music and our tastes are all over the map. Um, I take a lot of shit because it's the bedroom really doesn't hold the system very well. I, you know, there are two giant speakers eight inches from the end of my bed. Um, you know, Gary told me the SB 13 and the SB 4000 were the same size. So I believed them. I bought it. It doesn't fit. So now I have no room for my speakers, but you know, we have a, a pretty good system in the bedroom anyway. And that's really for, I would say just, you know, we drink, we, we relax, we have some, some good times and some music. And then you can hear a screaming baby in the background. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I certainly can. Um, the third system is is the living room system. And the bedroom has an SB4000 in it, by the way, which which brings up the bottom end. Um, How many people have an SB4000 in their bedroom? <laughs> I would have put the 16 if it fit. And it turns out it now that I know how big the 4000 is, it's actually not that much bigger to just have the 16 in there. So uh, maybe someday. Um, and then my living room, I've got two, you know, I've got a three-year-old. She's starting to watch Disney movies. You mentioned Raya, which she loves, and, and all the Disney movies. So that system, you know, um, I picked up, a, a, you know, an Ultra Center channel from you guys and some Ultra Surrounds. I had a couple old ceiling speakers in there, and, and you know, next up will be a sub. And, it, you know, it runs Disney movies all day long. I mean, just all day long, and it's great. So, Well, can I say that you kind of hung out and listened to that system with the with the uh, prime elevations and the and the right. uh, yep. ultra center uh in the uh in the library there at capital audio fest and, yep. and you said hey i like i'm gonna buy those so uh, to me yep. that's a guy like you who was just all, constantly listening to different um audio components and speakers i thought that was um i felt kind of proud yeah no listen we, we the, you know i'm in that room the, the the reality of it is now i probably spend more room more time in the Disney movie room than I do in any of their room. That's just the nature of kids. And so, so far, so good. I would have bought the towers, but they'll just fall over on the kids. So we're going to, we're going to wait, <laughs> we're going to wait to do that. Um, I need, I need a sub in there, but I know the kids are going to destroy it. So I don't want to do anything too nice. Yeah. Three to five is rough. My, uh, my son uses my subwoofer as a step stool so he can yes. reach stuff that he's not supposed to. Um, but yeah, I, I know the pain there, uh, but we do owe a giveaway and we're going to keep you on Brian. Cause uh, we've got some more stuff to chat about, but our second, prize of the evening is a pair of prime tower speakers the first time we've ever given away a pair of prime tower speakers and our winner of the prime tower speakers is michelle flory congratulations michelle flory you got some rocking congratulations michelle away. um so brian i want to talk to you a little bit about the group some more i mean you had mentioned uh you know it, it's a safe space it's a nice space and i think there's been an evolution since sort of the the days of the forums where you know it just felt like every time you went in there and asked a question you were just going to get judged into submission or just beaten down with you know if you don't get this you're stupid kind of thing so like what what sort of aura do you try to create because i know yours is closed it's only open to people locally but for others who may actually want to create something like the the facebook group that you've created what sort of advice what kind of things can you tell them you know, so the the biggest thing that we try to manage is these are debate forums. People, these are opinion forums, right? So, you know, we're trying to foster opinions and debate. I mean, it's, aside from the technical help and people who are showing their new jewelry off, which is, you know, probably half of it is everyone with that many members, someone's always got a new piece of audio file jewelry they want to show off. So that's part of it. But, you know, otherwise it, it's how do you let people go back and forth without it ending up in a fight, right? You know, um, you know, it, and the way we do it is, you know, we're okay with sarcasm. We're okay with, you know, with people disagreeing, 
But we, we try to, you know, I'll, we'll go in the background and we'll message people say, hey, you know what? Start that off with your opinion, right? You, you're stating something like it's a fact. It's not a fact. It's your opinion, right? So we try to manage it and it works out pretty good. The fact is, is but you got to keep that civil nature, but people got to debate. I mean, you know, if you want to bring up cables or something, people are going to descend into war, but they're generally friendly wars. I mean, I can only count in four years of running the group, maybe four people I've had to boot out. And, you know, we, we just don't have it. Um, and, because and nobody ever criticizes the person. That's right. They do criticize the opinion. They oh, definitely yeah. do. Yeah. They're, they don't take any prisoners as far as, okay, that I don't agree with that opinion. Yep. But they never say you're dumb or, you know, yeah. how ignorant you are. Never like that. And they it's say a great it's vibe they, they, in the group. <laughs> they tell me that all the time, but it's okay. I, <laughs> no, they I, don't. I'm That's there to take, the, take, to take it, but. And there are people who I know, I watch them in other forums. I can see them on Audio Files North America or some of these other groups. Some of them are really obnoxious people. And uh, and I mean that lovingly to all my members who are watching right now. But you know what? They come into our group and they, they're totally a different person because they know, you know, they're local. They might see somebody. They, you know, we're, we're, we're going to know who you are. We know where you live. <laughs> well, I think you did something which I thought was very interesting. Um, you contract some a member of of the group which i'm in this group too um a member of the group asked a question in the group and the but they at the same time i guess because they just wanted to make sure they got the right answer they also went on audio files in north america with some with a, I, I don't remember what it was it was maybe it was a comment maybe it was a question and brian was contrasting what happened in our in our group, I'm and I'm actually in that other group as well. I'm in Audio Files North America, but I don't I don't participate in it at all. Um, the person got roasted an audio for innocent question or comment. I don't remember what it was. They got roasted on Audio File Audio Files North America, or they got ignored. Whereas in in the group that you started, Brian, they they uh, were supported and answered. That's right. And, and I did, I remember, that's right, Gary, I, I put a picture up, screenshot of what happened in our group, which was people, you know, all kinds of positive responses and positive support and, 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 and a group with 20 times the member of members, if not 30 times the members of our group, you know, there was, there was nothing positive or very few positive things. And so th that is the difference. It's like a community we've created. I mean, I've, we now have a lot of people who are friends and, and, um, you know, it's just it's just if you can get something like this going in a region, it's a whole different vibe. It's a whole different vibe. It doesn't mean we don't have crap that goes down. We do, but we manage it. Yeah. So selfishly, guys... I suggested bringing Brian in. Selfishly, I want Brian to make his group national, but he won't do it because apparently he's a he's an attorney and he's a partner and he, sponsor he other has chapters. a whole other job he needs to do. Okay, you have a day job. That's right. But, 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 I, I love your reasoning. So people can punch each other in the face. Like it's sort of a safeguard. <laughs> you kept saying that. I was like, I don't get it, but I get, I get it now. I mean, but, you know, it, it's, if, if I'm having a whiskey, we have a happy hour coming up at a place called JS audio and Bethesda, Gary, you probably know who they are. Yep. Um, you know, Gary was, Gary was local to the scene. In fact, I've, I've had a, co a couple good stories on Gary from back in his day, but we'll, we'll save those for a rainy day. Um, I, I have some stories about him too, so he <laughs> needs to take it slow. <laughs> I'll be careful. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the truth is, is that I think really what we've done so far is creatable other folks, you know, in other places. But no, when Gary was up at Capital Audio Fest, he was like, you know, you should do this nationally. And that's right. I mean, I, I'm an attorney, believe it or not. And, and, this is my outlet and I don't have time to do it, but it isn't a lot of time. I mean, it, it's more time than you might think, but it's not a ton of time to do something like this, you know? So, um, if that's helpful. So Brian, you know, what I was starting to say is selfishly, I'd love to see you give people pointers on how to start a group like this, because there's one in Washington and I've never seen another one anywhere in the country yeah. that I know about. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think the way I bootstrapped it was, you know, you it's word of mouth quite a bit. You, if you have local vendor friends, like we now have four or five dealers in this area who will say, hey, are you on the forum? And it's because they all know me now. Right. Um, I went on Craigslist, you know, a lot of times and now it's Facebook Marketplace has taken over. But you know, everyone used to sell their gear on, on Craigslist. Right. So I put an ad up. Just come join our group. And we would get people, you know, guys who were searching for used turntables and Macintosh and stuff would see us on Craigslist. They started to come. And then I went on Audio Files North America and all the big groups, and I said, hey, if you're local and you want to join a local-only group that has get-togethers, 
come join our group. And it just it just took off. That those are the big things I did, really. And it worked. So So there wasn't that secret sauce. It was just you had some energy, you went on to yeah. some other audiophile groups. The next thing you knew, you were it was starting to build on itself. That's exactly right. Anyone can do it. It's not that hard. I'm gonna tell, you know, uh, uh, there a lot of the are uh, the um spirit of svs is in this group but it's also the svs community that you can if you're watching the comments brian you can see the positive energy yeah I haven't been watching I, it's fun but i'm hoping that maybe some svs community people think to themselves they would start a group like brian's because i think it's it shows that um this hobby that i love and i've dedicated pretty much my whole adult life to is fun um, and doesn't have to be um, sort of uh, snobby and arrogant. It's fun and and um, can be really kind of a joyful thing where everybody supports everybody else and we all have great experiences. Yeah. And, that, and that's right. And, and Gary, I know you, you, you're in the group, but we keep it so light. We, you know, we're, we're, we're just we're trying to have fun, whether it's sarcasm, making fun of ourselves. I mean, we really try to keep it fun. I'm, I'm you know, trying to manage that and and. So far, we're bringing out the best in people, even people who, you know, might normally be a little more quiet or dry or, or what have you. They just seem to let loose a little bit in our group because it's it's private. It's well, not really private, but more private. Right. I mean, and, and so it works out, you know, it's great stuff. So, Brian, I, I, we actually uh, right at the beginning we were supposed to ask you about your favorite demos. And I know in the group you were, uh, you know, being lauded for your. Uh, knowledge of children's movies and some of the best demos you can get from those <laughs> holiday ones specifically. Uh, but we did skip the uh, opportunity for you to share sure. some of your uh, favorite demos and you can make them from all of 2021 or just some more recent yeah. ones. But uh, what do you got on tap? What can you recommend yeah. to some good people? Well, so I just watched Venom the other night. I thought Venom was pretty good. Um, I thought they did a really good job in that movie, you know, with, with some of the special effects and everything else. Another movie that I picked up in 21 is the 4K remaster of Apocalypse Now. And I don't know if anyone's caught the complete 4K remaster, but in the beginning, they actually dissect a multi-channel, you know, the helicopter scene. If anyone knows that movie, it starts off with the sound of a helicopter, right? Well, in the extras on that disc, they have literally an Atmos home theater demo of just the chopper scene where the engineers who remastered Apocalypse Now take you through how they remastered the chopper. And they show you they have it coming out of all separate speakers. So they'll show it go left to right, up and down. So highly suggest... The soundtrack in the movie is awesome. Um, the 4K remaster is awesome. And if you're a, you know, a home theater guy, then for sure the extras are really cool. They literally take the time for multi-channel people and take you through some of the remastering of Apocalypse Now. So that I picked up this year, and I've had a lot of fun. We love the movie. Um, you know, I think we, we more recently, Cruella has an amazing soundtrack. And it, mm. it's, it's not a special effects movie, but if anyone's not seen it, it is a Disney movie. But there is probably 15 to 20 good classic rock songs. Believe it or not, you'd never expect to see it in Cruella. But they, re they really make the movie. It's actually a pretty, a pretty good movie. I would suggest you catch it if you haven't caught it yet. Um, so. I have not seen Cruella, but that's a great recommendation. Family Flicks, that's what we're all about. Yeah, it would, that's you know, blow you away podcast. that there's good, there's good tunes in that movie. I mean, it's never more for like 15 seconds, but, you know, it's, it's, it comes together well. So that's some of the stuff this year. So I, I don't want to diverge too much, but uh, I did have multiple people asking to see the full sweater. And this is a multi uh, <laughs> multimedia sweater. It does light up here a little bit with the uh, antlers there. So there you go. You got the full <laughs> spectrum of what I what I got on. I wouldn't even call it ugly because I actually think this thing's pretty sharp. Yeah, it's a but, nice you know. rack, Nick. Yeah. Well, thank you, Larry. <laughs> How nice of you. Uh, so, Brian, I am curious, you know, from a music perspective, do you have a favorite um format for consuming music you know are you into vinyl digital streaming you, you take it all in what's your favorite yeah i notoriously hate vinyl um, in okay. fact that's that's one of the things in the group that anyone in the group knows i can't get through one side of a whole album i mean there's maybe three albums in the history of albums where i can listen to a whole side i don't have the patience for it um it's probably you know i had a vpi turntable for a while i tried and i you know there's like maybe a few albums where i could get through a whole side where i wouldn't want to stand up so I mostly stream. Um, so there's no more there's no more vinyl in my house. Uh, mostly streaming, and our music tastes are all over the map. I mean, you know, I'm I'm you know I've I've gotten a little tired of classic rock. So we you know I've been through it. I can only hear you know even though I love the songs, I can only hear a Pink Floyd or a Zeppelin song so many times before I just can't hear it anymore. 
Um, so I'm big into alt rock. Me and my wife listen to a lot of alt rock, like Halsey and and Holly Humberstone lately, and and you know, Cannons, which sort of crosses over into electronic a little bit. So a lot of alt rock, and then we listen to electronica. And I say electronica, it's not like we're, you know, high speed stuff, but like Nora and Pure. Mm-hmm. Nora and Pure was the first concert we went to when she came back to DC. She was here about two or three months ago. So a lot of down tempo electronic music. We we relax to that quite a bit. And um, you know, it sounds, you know, on any system, it sounds good. And the, you know, the nice part about electronic is there's always beats below 40 hertz, 50 hertz. So if you're running subs, you know, it might not come on at all during a stone song, but it's sure as hell gonna come on uh when you listen to some sort of you know chill electronic or something like that. So that's, that's any kids' that's music? Cool. What do you what do you play for your three-year-old to you know? rock out anything <laughs> disney like I mean, it's, it's disney songs i mean okay. she you know she'll sing we just came back from disney uh, about three weeks ago uh we took her down to disney and and since then it's just been one disney song after the next so that's, well, that's we've been big on they might be giants recently they got some great sort of educational uh songs that uh that are great background music and uh, they don't they don't get that annoying because they actually do a lot of cool instrumental work and uh you know clever lyrics and stuff so uh, the old band or, or is that something new because there's an old band called they might be giants isn't there or yeah, no, they've been around a long, long time. time yeah, yeah they, they actually when like... I was, believe it or not nick i was i i went to the university of rhode island so i'm up i live where nick lives up here in rhode island i don't know if anyone knows that sorry if i disclosed it but um <laughs> originally i'm from rhode island and i actually ran the student entertainment committee at uri and we brought in they might be giants um so i've actually met a lot of these bands and partied with them we brought in Dylan when no one wanted him. I mean, he, there was a period of time where you couldn't give him away. And and he came in. And, and so a lot of these bands I've hung out with and, and partied with. Um, and they were pretty good people. Very cool. Well, we're due for another giveaway. And uh, we're doing a subwoofer this time. Our award-winning PB1000 Pro subwoofer. And the new owner of that is Andy Garner. Congratulations, Andy, Gar- Andy Garner. Got Yay, PB1000 Andy. Pro coming your way. Uh, so we're at about... Three quarters past the hour. Gary, we're going to keep Brian around for a little bit longer. We got some, uh, I, ha- I have some um, glossary terms we can go into if you'd like. You want to stick can... with us, Brian, and help us define these terms? I'll, I'll just hang and chill whatever you ask of me. How's that? Let's do, let's we're, do we're that. Lightning I think, Brian, yeah, you're doing away. great. I think you're, you're, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to be on our next show too. <laughs> yeah. Is it? <laughs> This is our vocab. You may test. have to quit your day job. I'm no, sorry. No good deed goes unpunished. That's, that's the saying <laughs> exactly in my law right. job all day. Is anything you do, you get punished for it, good or bad. You can be our holiday guest. So every time there's a holiday, you'll be on. You'll have to get a festive mug that uh, goes good. with it. So Oktoberfest uh, might, might be on cue for you. So um, let's let's do some glossary terms. And there's a couple of questions that I wanted to get to as well. But the uh, first one, I'm going to throw this one to you, Gary. Uh, and the first one I want to define is active crossover. And I think maybe you got to put it in terms of what's the difference between a regular crossover and an active crossover. Okay. And that's actually a great question. Um, when we, when we use the term crossover, we typically mean the, the um, circuitry inside of a passive full range speaker that, that um, distributes the power to the tweeter, the mid range, the, the woofer, whatever drivers are in the speaker. Now, that's not an active crossover because your amplifier powers the speakers and the power then gets diverted to the different drivers by the crossover. Um, and of course, because uh, you don't want to send uh, a tweet or a full range signal, nor do you want to send a woofer or a mid range, a full range signal, the artistry of a passive crossover is in how you execute what you send where and what frequencies are going to which driver but there's more to it than that um you also want to do it in such a way that you are doing as little as possible to the signal so the signal remains pristine the ideal speaker uh, the old saying was a straight wire with gain meaning exactly what went into it amplified and then to your ears so it's uh, creating a crossover is re- uh, a lot of artistry and when it's a passive crossover like the one i just described it's difficult because literally, and I've uh, we do this. Uh, we, we're sitting uh, all hours of the day and night, and I'm saying I'm hearing something I don't want to hear, or I'm not hearing something I do want to hear as we listen to music. And uh, Smith, uh, Jack, Mitch, and uh, Ruben are literally soldering components uh, or attaching components to the crossover, and we listen and measure. It's difficult. 
Now, an active crossover, basically what that is doing is diverting the signal before it gets amplified. So you can do that in the digital realm, then send the signal to the different amplifiers. What you need in an active crossover environment is a separate amplifier for each driver. And then you can um, give that amplifier just the frequencies that it needs to drive that driver. So there's a lot of advantages to it because we can do it. And we do this with Prime Wireless, as, as I think most of our uh, community knows. Um, we, can granular, we can do basically granular uh, uh, crossing over of the signal to the amplifier because it's taking place in the digital domain. Um, but the other piece of it that people don't realize is that when we're voicing prime wireless, we can literally make changes on the fly with a computer. We're not soldering components and listening to what it sounds like. We are a being between different digital crossover profiles in real time. So that is why in some ways an active crossover has a lot of advantages over um, a passive crossover. But to just circle it back to the definition, passive crossover is after the amplifier sends the power. Um, active crossover is before. And so you need a single, you need a separate <clears throat> amplifier for each driver. Does that answer uh, it? That's about as comprehensive as you can get. I think that's great. Yeah, um, there was a request for a passive aggressive crossover from the <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. I was that's accused aggressive. of being passive aggressive by a family member uh, during, during Thanksgiving. And I said, look, I'm just aggressive. Nobody can accuse me of being passive aggressive. It's not <laughs> I don't fair. hold back. All right, Brian, I'm going to give you one of these, uh, you know, very sort of prototypical audiophile terms, and we're going to put you to the test. Sure. Why don't you explain to us what neutrality is? <laughs> well, I don't know because I own horn speakers. Um, so, so <laughs> you know, one of the things I do in the group is I do a lot of reviews of stuff. And you know, I have a hard policy. If I do a review of something, I won't take a deal from a manufacturer or anything like that. So it's um, but to me, what neutrality means is it's just passing through a signal as the person who recorded it intended it to do. And, and so that can either be, you know, a victim of bad recording or, or you know, vic victims of streaming or other things. But that's the way I would interpret it is it's, it's literally passing through a signal to the best it can. Um, but that's I that's, agree with that. If you're adding no sonic signal to the signal. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I listen to Macintosh and horns so that I don't have anything neutral in my whole house. Um, but 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 I get it, you know. So. so what's the opposite of neutral? Is there a term? Yeah, probably my systems, I would say. Um, you, you know, I, I think, you know, I think the house sound term is probably the opposite. Right. I mean, there are manufacturers all over the place who, you know, Macintosh is one of them. They put their house sound on. I don't know how they do it. I don't know the wizardry in the background, but, you know, they, they're trying to sound like a tube, even though they're not a tube. They'll. They'll give you more on the bottom end than you need, or or they're bright up top, things like that. I think that's the opposite of neutral. It's not it's not just passing through a signal. It's trying to emphasize certain um, bandwidths, and, yeah. and that's what I do, frankly, in my home system because it, you know I, I like it that way. Yeah, but, that that's why this is a hobby. You can personalize it to your tastes, and I think that's an important <laughs> element that you know why you have these debates in these groups and on forums yes, is because yes, yes we do you know yes, one person do. may hear something that another person doesn't like and you know it doesn't make you right or wrong it's just your perspective so yep. um all's fair uh so larry i'm gonna give you one here and, and maybe the scientific part of this isn't as important as the end result but what does it mean when speakers or subwoofers are out of phase well when it happens the most i think is when all of us are wiring up our system and a lot of people might get the positive and negative wire backwards. And typically what it does, it just throws your signal that with just making it simple out of whack and to where there will be uh, time delays or an issue with the way the frequencies and uh, signals are actually being uh, portrayed to you. So it can create typically a delay or where your sound is just off typically on one side or the other. And there's a way more depth to go into that, but, um, it's really just when the sound overlap isn't proper is probably the best way to put it, where things aren't blending properly because one side may be out from another. Well, I think or probably the, 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 right. to simplify that, it's it's typically um, speakers have a positive and negative terminal. And if all the speakers um, aren't in sync with each other in terms of the positive and negative terminals, then they're going to be out of phase with each other. And so um, one of the first things that um, 
I do when we're doing our demo systems. And I don't do it with you anymore, Larry, because you're actually pretty perfect in terms of setting up a system. But with others, I will go through all the wiring and make sure that it's a classic mistake that gets made. Um, yep. The other one is confusing the back surrounds and the side surrounds, right? Um, but the classic mistake that, that gets made is one speaker is out of phase and it ruins the whole system, meaning the positive uh, wire, the positive terminal from the receiver goes to the negative terminal of the speaker. And nothing bad's going to happen. Your speaker's not going to blow up or melt down, but it's just going to be off. Yeah. Yeah, but I can tell you my experience, though, sometimes I've had home theater receivers be wrong in, in detecting it. Um, you, they're right a lot of the times, but sometimes I'll, tip, I'll triple check and I'm like, there's no phase issue with that speaker. Yeah, it's speaker. always right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that and that's I we see that too, and it, it, that's more room dependent, and um, sometimes can be fixed with with um, the the Odyssey, but more likely than not, it's just going to mess it up. So better to ignore that that feedback from your receiver if you know you're right. Yeah. So, Gary, I know this is what this is a term that I think you've called like a fake term before, but. You know, it's thrown around a lot by, you know, audio magazines and stuff. Musicality. What is musicality? Well, it's just not a word. It's a fake word. It's I, I actually like the term, what the term is trying to say, which is, um, well, I think it's actually a little version of what Brian was saying. Brian is saying, I have my system set up so that I can enjoy music when it's playing music. You know, what a concept, right? How radical. And and I, I but I agree with that, that, that you know, you can create a speaker that is ruthlessly revealing of, you know, the awfulness of a recording. What's the fun in that? I mean, there's no joy in that. So um, we always work hard to be very accurate, very detailed, very transparent, but always musical. And so I guess that's the, the terminology of musicality. If all it's doing is ruthlessly blaring detail in your face, to me, it's not enjoyable. Yeah. I use the fatigue test. I just took a lot, a lot of, you know, crap from the group because I went on a DACathon where I had about five or four or five DACs in a house, about two thousand dollar price point, and then up settling on a DAC that had a tube uh, Border Patrol, Gary. You might know Border Patrol. I uh, watched your review. I thought it was yeah. great how you did that. And at the end of the day, it was the DAC that didn't have the latest chip. In fact, it's got an out of date chip, and it doesn't have all the technology. But but you know what? I, I could listen to it for hours. It sounded great, and it just made the music feel better. And so I said, it's musical, and I don't really care if I'm going to get every last note from a song that I probably didn't want to hear to begin with. And some of these DACs, especially, to me, they're just throwing bits and bites at you, whether you want to hear them or not. So, uh, Great explanation. I so I, we got to take one question before we get to our final giveaway. And uh, Doug did to last, and I'm going to throw this one to you, Larry, because I've heard you answer something similar to this before, and you do a great job. Yeah. When you designed your center channel speakers, why did we go with a shorter boxier as opposed to the longer version with the smaller drivers? Well, hey, there's probably a lot that's going to go into that more than what I'm going to be able to say. But, you know, if, if you do typically a, a longer, skinnier cabinet, you're going to be using much smaller drivers that are way less capable. And I think that's probably where a lot of our design came in. Gary can probably speak way more to this, but well, let, me, let me just say one, thing, the two one important point yeah. that, that um, gets lost. Our, our, our speaker, our center channel speakers are tall enough to support a mid range and a tweeter in the same vertical plane. And why do we do that? Um, well, first of all, a center channel's job is to um, let anyone who is sitting anywhere in the room because a home theater you typically don't have everyone able to sit in the sweet spot right directly between the front speakers a center channel job is to let everyone in the room no matter where they're sitting hear with clarity the dialogue or, or anything else that's being sent to the center channel so for that reason you need the um ability of the speaker to have dispersion qualities that go to either side if you have a horizontally oriented center channel speaker, which I see all the time with a tweeter in between two mid ranges, it will create something called a lobing effect, meaning the speaker will kind of shoot out straight out in front of it. And anyone off to the side will not have the same frequency response going to their ears. It will not sound as good. The way um, a good center channel is oriented, the tweeter in the mid range are vertically right on top of each other and they disperse out to the sides uh, so that anyone sitting anywhere in the room basically gets the same experience. 
So a center channel, in order to be state of the art, in order to be referenced, really needs to have that. Well said. So before we get to our last giveaway of the evening, I did want to say thank you to Brian Recapito. Uh, if you're in the D.C. area, I don't know how uh, wide you go outside of D.C., but there's a lot of people. I'm from Texas, and we don't have any cool groups here. Uh, yeah. You know, you'll have to deal work with him and the moderators to, to figure that part out. But if not, start your own group. You know, I think he's proof that, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. But uh, once it gets rolling, it sort of gathers. And it's uh, fun, right? I mean, I think you have fun doing it, Brian. I, I have a ton of fun. I mean, you know, I've made a lot of friends. It's just I wouldn't go back and undo it for anything. It's been great. And I think a big thing you could do is get to know your local retailers too. go in there and meet the staff, meet the owner, meet the store manager and see if they maybe have some recommendations on people that they know that are in the area too, that are into the same stuff. All of yeah. them are members of the group. Eventually, if you do this, I mean, every manufacturer or even, even vendor or manufacturer in our region is in the group. Someone's in the group. They're always there. So. Yep. I can awesome. So our final giveaway, just to recap for the evening is a, uh, is a big one. It's a 2.1 stereo system, including our ultra bookshelf speakers. SB1000 Pro subwoofer, Prime Wireless sound base, and all the sound bath, uh, sound path RCA and ultra speaker cables you'll need to connect it. And our winner, chosen at random, which couldn't be a more perfect name, is Rudolph Anthony DeBoard the Fourth. Congratulations, <laughs> awesome. Rudolph Anthony DeBoard the Fourth. You got yourself a really awesome 2.1 system. Um, and as I mentioned before, this is our last audio file happy hour of the year. So Gary, I'm actually going to let you close this one out with any parting thoughts you wanted to share with the folks uh, as we head into 2022 and, uh, and basically let you take it out here for the final episode of the year. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. Well, you know, I, I, I have to say that I, I, I couldn't be happier with these um, ha audiophile happy hours because of the SVS community. You guys, we, I mean, I can tell you, we look forward to this all week long. It's the highlight <laughs> of our week and the, just watching the comments, the positive energy, I guess I want to wish everyone the happiest of holidays, the happiest of New Year's, even when we supposedly are going to get back to normalcy, which I really and truly hope we do. Um, we'll continue with these virtual audiophile happy hours, and we're going to start going back to physical events where we can hopefully meet all of you guys <laughs> in the same physical space. So happy New Year. Here's to a great 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Oh, and I want to thank enough. Brian. Brian, you're yeah. awesome, buddy. Uh, we'll see you on the next show, it, please. Two weeks. Yep. And, Appreciate you and we'll announce our next dates here uh, coming soon. I know I normally tease the next one, but we'll have those uh, announcements coming soon. So happy listening. Stay jolly. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And uh, enjoy the uh, holiday season, and, everybody. And see some of you at CES.